Good afternoon, Long Beach Uni uh, Unified Community. Thank you for tuning in today for a very important topic regarding our youth. Did you know that e-cigarettes or vapes can be disguised to look like a common pen, a highlighter, a tube of lipstick, asthma inhalers, or USB drives? The use of e-cigarettes or vaping has become a youth embedded youth epidemic with dire health consequences. Today, we have Cassie Schroeder from the Long Beach Department of Health and Human Services to give us information that you need to know about this important topic affecting our youth. So Ms. Schroeder, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you for that introduction. I'll be jumping right into the slides here. So our presentation is called The Youth Vaping Epidemic, What Parents Need to Know. And again, my name is Cassie. This is my full name and uh, contact information will be on the last slide. I have a master's in public health from Cal State Long Beach and I have worked in the field of tobacco control prevention and cessation for almost a decade now. I've worked with adults and youth who are trying to quit nicotine addiction. I also have a personal family history of addiction with nicotine and other substances and I understand how important this issue is for families. So I really thank you for tuning in today. It'll be a brief presentation with plenty of time for questions. And we really look forward to interacting with you all and making sure you have the information you need to provide the healthiest environment for your family. My title is Tobacco Diversion Coordinator, and I'm excited to share some more information towards the end of the presentation about some local resources we have for you all and your children. The agenda for today's presentation includes the following topics, current trends, health risks of tobacco and e-cigarettes, helpful tips based on evidence to help you support prevention and cessation in your family, and like I said, local resources for parents and youth. So we'll jump right into current trends. As was mentioned in the text message you may have received or the email or even that brief introduction, youth vaping is a huge issue. In the last two years, vaping has increased by 218% among our middle schoolers and 135% among our high schoolers. That's a lot of youth who are trying these products out. Another headline is that nearly half of those teens who are currently using these products want to quit. They just can't because nicotine is such an addictive substance and they just don't know how to do it. And that's where you come in, whether you're a parent, a grandmother, a caregiver, or even an older sibling, as I am for, younger, for my younger sister, um, who's this age range, it's important that we understand the knowledge and information about this. So a brief introduction with tobacco products. I could spend an hour just on this slide alone. I won't, but I could. Over here is the tobacco leaf, and this is kind of the originator of all of these issues. Inside of that tobacco leaf is found nicotine. It's a naturally occurring substance, but it's also highly addictive. And the tobacco industry has turned that into very deadly cigarettes, flavored nicotine and flavored cigarettes, and the majority of our topic today will be talking about vapes, which are some of these products here. Other tobacco products include hookah and smokeless tobacco. And there are several more that are not even listed on the slide, but I wanted to give you an idea of what we're talking about when we discuss tobacco. When I decide, when I discuss e-cigarettes and vapes, I'm referring to anything that has a liquid here it's referenced as an e-liquid, which means electronic liquid, plus a heating element, usually a battery or a coil. Those two combine to create an aerosol. We'll get into more about the aerosol in a few slides. As was mentioned in the introduction, there's a lot of different types of e-cigarettes. Some of you may be familiar with those on the top row here, but also the ones on the bottom row are e-cigarettes. They've been disguised as lipstick, the strings in the hoodie, a pen. These look like USB devices, a whistle, a watch. These companies that are creating these products understand that they're marketing to youth. Youth have a desire to hide their use of these products, 
Most adults understand it's legal for them to use. They don't have to hide. But with our youth, they're being targeted with these devices. And that's a problem. As was mentioned earlier, I just want to highlight a little bit more in a visual graph here, the growth in e-cigarette use. So our high school students are this top line here. Middle school is down below and an average of all students is this yellow line. So you can see it increased and is continuing to do so despite our best efforts. Another topic um, regarding e-cigarettes is flavor. Flavored e-cigarettes are a big issue and they're a real draw for our youth. So this graph um, explains basically the different types of tobacco products that youth are using. And you can see electronic cigarette devices or smoking devices are here. And this yellow portion shows the percentage of flavored products. So flavors are really the big draw for our youth. This data is more specific to our county, so LA County, and this is tobacco use among high school students. And you can see all the different types of tobacco and the blue part represents the fruit or sweet flavor. So those are the flavors that are drawing our youth to these products. The lighter blue color is mint. Now, before I move on to the health risks of tobacco and e-cigarettes, I just wanted to check in and see if there were any questions that came in. Cassie, we don't have any questions at this moment. No worries, we just got started. So okay. I'm um, sure there'll be some coming in as we yes. go through. All right, so the next portion is going to be talking about health risks of tobacco and e-cigarettes. A lot of you probably know that combustible cigarettes or traditional cigarettes are not good for you. Cigarette smoking is the leading preventable cause of death in the United States. It causes more than 480,000 deaths each year in the US. That's nearly one in five people who die, died from smoking tobacco or some kind of relation to it. Smoking causes more deaths each year than all the following causes combined. HIV, illegal drug use, alcohol use, car crashes, and firearm related incidents. And I'm not sure if you can see it with my face here. I'm going to move myself over here. Smoking can cause cancer almost anywhere in your body. A lot of adults know this, and I really believe our public health in America has done a great job letting our youth know how bad these are for their bodies. A lot of youth I know would never touch a cigarette, nevertheless smoke a whole pack in one day. But as you'll see in a few slides, that's exactly what they're doing, almost exactly what they're doing when they're using vape products. So, you may recognize this from a few slides ago. I brought it up again because I wanted to make an important point. E-cigarettes have been um, branded kind of as vapes, quote unquote vapes. Youth love to refer to them as vapes and the tobacco industry loves that youth refer to them as vapes because it reminds them of water vapor. Water vapor is the steam that comes out of your shower or off of a tea kettle. It's not what comes out of these products. What comes out of these products is an aerosol. It's an aerosolized version of the chemicals that are inside. So we're gonna take a deeper look into that, but I really want to make it clear, this is not water vapor. What has been found inside of these products in the short amount of time we've been able to do research on them are these and more. As I've mentioned before, nicotine, it's the most, one of the most addictive chemicals that you can put into any of these devices, and it's found in almost all of them. The heating up of the chemicals inside of these e-cigarettes creates volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, ultra-fine particles that can get lodged into the lungs, cancer-causing chemicals, heavy metals such as nickel, tin, and lead, those come from the battery and heating up of those metals and plastics, and then flavorings. Flavorings, again, is a huge one for youth. They really love flavored products. One of them is called diacetyl. It's a chemical linked to a serious lung disease. It gives a very buttery flavor. So it's often used in popcorn or creme brulee type flavors. 
It's delicious on my, uh, movie theater popcorn, but not so great for the inside lining of your lungs. Once my slides, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes they like to play around with me and freeze up a little. So I know this is a lot of information on one slide and I won't go through every single one of them, but take a look at just the sheer volume and number of chemicals. These are all found inside of e-cig aerosol. We've got arsenic right down here. It's a rat poison, all kinds of heavy metals, formaldehyde, which is used to preserve dead bodies, and propylene glycol and glycerin. These are the main ingredients inside of these um, e-cig devices. And when they're heated up, the byproduct becomes a lot of these other products. So we'll look into that a little bit more on the next slide. Most of us can agree that fruit, let's use mango as an example, is very healthy for us to eat. We eat it, it goes down our esophagus into our stomach, our body can utilize those nutrients, we feel great. Now, manufacturers of candy products have found a way to make candy taste similar to that fruit. So I use here a mango candy and it has propylene glycol inside. It's a chemical that allows it to be sticky and hold its texture. And it's been proven safe and effective for your stomach. However, if you take that same ingredient, let's say in a mango flavored jewel pod, you heat it up with a vape and you inhale it into your lungs, it's a very different process. But a lot of our youth don't understand this basic logic. And that's because they're still developing, their brain hasn't fully formed, and I'm not saying that they're not intelligent, but it just allures to them, or it allures them to consume candy in a vapor cloud but they don't understand it's not going to their stomach, it's going into their lungs and they're very different processes. So one is approved as safe and one's not approved. It's not approved by the FDA to inhale anything into your lungs. Other health risks of these e-cigarette and vape devices include nicotine addiction, which changes brain chemistry and the teen brain, as I mentioned before, develops until the age of about 25. So good luck to all you parents out there. I understand what you're going through. I'm a parent as well. Chemical residue in the lungs can lead to inflammation and other serious conditions such as EVALI and COVID-19, which we'll discuss in the next few slides. And there are no long-term health studies yet. These products have only been out on the market and in use for a very short period of time. It took us almost 100 years of using cigarettes before science came out to really prove to the general public how dangerous they were. We don't want to wait that long for e-cigarettes. We already know that they're not safe. So going into EVALI, EVALI stands for e-cigarette or vaping related lung injury. As of February of this year, which I know it seems many years ago, but it was just a few short months ago, we almost had 3,000 hospitalized EVALI cases and 68 deaths have been reported to the CDC. That's the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. These hospitalizations and deaths were related to vitamin E acetate from THC containing products. THC stands for tetrahydrocarbonanol, which is found in cannabis or marijuana. We'll talk about that a little bit more as well. The devices that these young people were using included vitamin E, acetate, nicotine, and other substances. So although um, it's not exclusive to just nicotine, these products were part of that group of causing um, these cases and deaths. So it's definitely healthier to avoid these. As I mentioned, uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, can <laughs> THC, um, that's found inside of marijuana and cannabis. So these e-cigarette and vaping devices do not work just with the nicotine from tobacco plants. It also works with other substances. Um, the research that we have right now is focused on cannabis and marijuana. Almost a third of high schoolers and a quarter of middle schoolers report ever using cannabis inside of e-cigarettes. And that vaping of cannabis has increased by 58% in a single year. 
So this is important to note because some students are able to get their hands on these products and not only are they dealing with the nicotine addiction, but they're also dealing with cannabis addiction. And often they're using these products simultaneously, not meaning that they're using two products at one time, but they'll use one product and then another one later that day or later that week. And so they're getting this co-use and this co-dependency towards these products. There we go. The next slide is talking about COVID-19 or coronavirus. You may have heard about it. Um, unfortunately, it's had a huge impact on all of our lives, but science has shown that teen vapors are up to seven times more likely to get COVID-19 or coronavirus than non-e-cig users. How this works is that their risk of COVID-19 is increased one, because of the hand-to-mouth interaction, taking off the mask to use the product, as well as smoking or vaping cannabis or tobacco damages the lungs and harms the immune system, meaning the body is less able to fight disease. So when they're exposed to COVID-19, their infection is more severe. Here's an example of a young man named Colin. He began vaping at age 17, and he believes that that habit of his contributed to his severe coronavirus symptoms. Luckily, he is okay now, but he's definitely not vaping anymore. Now, the whole reason e-cigarettes were created was a very noble cause. And working in the tobacco cessation field, when I first heard about these products, I was very, very interested in them. I thought it was a wonderful product to help people quit smoking, and that's what they were intended to do. But Smoking cessation products are intended to help someone quit nicotine addiction. They're regulated through the Food and Drug Administration, which ensures that the products are safe and effective. What I mean by smoking cessation products are patches, nicotine gum, prescription medications from your doctor that help with the symptoms and the withdrawal side effects of quitting smoking. E-cigarettes are not an approved smoking cessation product. They don't get people off of nicotine and they don't remove the habit of the mouth, the hand to mouth movement. A study looking at adults who quit combustible cigarettes last year, only 1% used Juul or other types of e-cigarettes to get off of traditional cigarettes. And even if they were able to get off, those 1% are still using a Juul, which means they're still spending money. They're still inhaling things into their lungs. They're still exposing themselves and others to cancer causing chemicals, and they're still addicted to nicotine. So unfortunately, although these products started with a noble cause, what's happened with the flavorings is that they're attracting a whole new generation who never would have picked up traditional cigarettes, but now are three to four times more likely to start smoking traditional cigarettes. Dare I say it's a gateway drug to other, other use. Thank you for your patience with the slides. So, how many cigarettes are in a pod? I mentioned earlier that a lot of youth I work with would never smoke 20 cigarettes in one day. This is one pack of cigarettes. Now, one Juul pod, which was a very popular product a few years ago, contains 41.3 milligrams of nicotine. That means it contains about 41 cigarettes worth of nicotine. And a lot of youth that I've been working with will consume one of these in a day. Maybe the average is a little bit less, depending on who you're speaking with. But even if they consumed it in two or three days, that's still two packs of cigarettes. They would never smoke that much if they knew that that was in there. They just think they're smoking or vaping something with water and nice flavorings inside. And of course, as we get up to the higher volume, the more nicotine e-liquid that's inside, the more cigarettes that they're consuming. It's ridiculous how much nicotine is in these products. And the manufacturers of these products have found a way to make the nicotine salts inside of the product give the same quick um, reaction. So as soon as it gets into their lungs, within eight seconds, it's in their brain. 
and it gives them a very um, interesting buzz that makes them feel good for a short period of time. But once they get hooked, they need that nicotine to continue feeling good. And I believe I've mentioned flavors already, but 97% of youth said flavors were the primary reason for using e-cigarettes. And unfortunately, well, let me say this first. Fortunately, as of 2009, federal law prohibits use of flavorings in cigarettes, but there are currently no federal restrictions on flavored e-cigarettes. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about a state and local ban, and then I believe we'll have some time for questions. I know I'm covering a lot in this section, but I really appreciate your attention. So SB 793 stands for Senate Bill 793, and it's a bill that has been signed by the governor that bans the sale of all flavored tobacco in the state of California, including vapes and menthol cigarettes. This law holds the tobacco industry responsible by prohibiting retailers from selling flavored tobacco products that target our youth. The law does not criminalize an individual for purchasing, using, or possessing flavored tobacco products. So it will not increase suspensions necessarily. Um, it might increase some people's anger if they use these products. However, um, we really feel that being able to ban the sale of all flavored tobacco products allows youth to not get their hands on it. And that's the point of this presentation is the effect on our youth, the effect on their health and their future. The exemptions for this include the sale of flavored hookah, premium cigars over $12 and loose leaf pipe tobacco. We also have a Long Beach flavor ban and that restricts sales of some flavored tobacco products in the city of Long Beach until January 3rd, unless extended by our city council. And this restriction prohibits flavored cigarillos, electronic smoking devices, e-smoking device fluid, and menthol cigarettes. And there'll be more information about how you can get more involved in this cause if you are interested in a few slides from now. Some students are saying, so here's some quotes from students talking about e-cigarettes and vapes. Now, these were taken from last year, so please understand that they were still on campus at this time. Um, I will give some anecdotal quotes that I've heard um, in just a few moments, but some students avoid using the restrooms at school due to the amount of vaping taking place there. And that's unfortunate because our students need to be able to relieve themselves throughout the eight hour school day. Some will pay one to three dollars to borrow and use someone else's jewel in the restroom. So not only are students bringing their own, but they're also essentially selling drugs to other students on campus. Some vape in class and blow the aerosol down their shirt, sweatshirt sleeve or into their backpack. And I've heard a lot from students that as soon as the teacher turns their back, they'll take a quick puff, blow it into their shirt. And aside from the fruity smell, which sound, smells a lot like the perfumes that youth will wear, there's not much evidence of any wrongdoing and the teacher never really even notices. Now, with the times of coronavirus and COVID-19, students being more at home, um, we don't have any hard evidence on how many youth are currently vaping because we're not able to do widespread surveys of youth at this point in time, but that will be coming soon. What we do know though, is that youth are utilizing social media such as Snapchat and Instagram to find drop-off points for these products and they're using online means to purchase them. So that was a large section talking about the health effects and some of our local policies. Have any questions come in between now and then or then and now? We do have one, um, but before I ask it, I would just like to remind our viewers they can use the comment feature to put any questions in there. So we had a question, uh, looks like it's in regards to the laws, say asking why doesn't the law close those stores? I'm assuming they mean those stores that are selling to those that they shouldn't be. Great question. So um, speaking for the health department, because that is my current rule. The law, um, our Environmental Health Bureau does give citations to stores who sell to youth 
or who are selling flavored products when they're not supposed to be. The ordinance currently in Long Beach started in July and will end in January, as I said, unless it's extended by city council. So if any stores are selling between that July and January timeframe and they are caught either by someone referring them to us um, or we use one of our decoy operations to do a routine inspection and we find that they're out of compliance, they will be cited. However, they are business owners and they are selling a product to the community. We cannot, tobacco is legal <laughs> over age 21. As much as I personally, taking off my hat, as much as I personally would love for it to be completely off, off market, um, you know, I cannot uh, speak for the city itself. Uh, business owners are allowed to sell their products. However, we don't want them to sell to youth. It is illegal for them to sell to youth under 21, but we do know the flavors are attracting them. And that's why the ban is specific to flavors. So I hope that answers your question. If you do have more questions regarding that, I'm happy to give you more information. My contact information will be on the last slide and of course in the description of the video. Um, are there any other questions? Not at this time, thank you. Thank you so much. Again, I hope I answered your question there and um, we'll move on to helpful tips now. If my screen doesn't freeze up. It might freeze up, give me a second, there we go. So I'm assuming that most of you on this call are parents or a caregiver of some sort. And you, after learning all this information and knowing everything you knew even before you clicked on this presentation, you might be feeling a little overwhelmed. You might feel like, how do I even start the conversation? Every time I've brought it up in the past, perhaps um, your tone has been a little judgmental. In a sense, I understand completely why it would be. Again, I have family members, parents and other family members who use these products, who are still using these products. And because they're so close to home, we take it very personally that they're using them. We want what's best for them. We want their health to be okay and we don't want them to get into trouble. So as best as you can, try to be patient and be ready to listen, not to talk. I know you want to just share all the stuff that you learned and it's important to do that but there's a different way to do it. And I hope that some of these points might give you some extra helpful skills. So of course, answer questions when they're asked. Set clear expectations on what behaviors are allowed in your family. And that's for you to decide your family values. Teach refusal skills, how to say no. And we will teach that in our diversion classes, which I've alluded to before, and I'll share more about in just a few slides. But refusal skills is a huge one for youth. In fact, I know many adults who don't know how to say no to their friends. They feel peer pressured by their colleagues or by friends to do things they don't wanna do. So for youth who really love their friends, it's really, really hard to say no. So you can give them examples of how to say no and still keep their friends. There are ways to say that they're not interested. There are ways to say, oh, my mom would get me in trouble um, or use an example. For, an, for example, you can say, oh, my parents drug test me so I can't use that. I won't be able to play sports. There are ways to allow yourself to be kind of the scapegoat and they can blame you but in the end, they're able to say no and still keep their friends. Now, of course, if you really don't like their friends because they're using these products, that's a whole other conversation to have with your student about who they're choosing to hang out with. And of course, again, that goes back to your family values and the expectations you place on them and, and um, the rules and regulations that you give your family. Model healthy behaviors is a huge one, especially with teenagers because they do not like it when someone comes off as hypocritical. So uh, as much as I completely understand how hard it is to get off of nicotine, to quit cigarettes, if you're currently using cigarettes or vape products, it will be very difficult to convince your child to not use them if you're also using them. We also have resources for you and we'll share more at the end if you are struggling with nicotine addiction, um, but we really want you to model healthy behaviors because that helps set the stage for your youth. And of course, share facts when you hear them. For instance, 
once you get off this presentation, you can say, hey, I heard this lady from the health department talking about vapes. What do you know about vapes? And that goes back to that first bullet point, be ready to listen. They might tell you a bunch of things they know about vapes that you know are untrue, but don't jump down their throat right away and say, that's not right, because they might really feel that it's true. So then you could take some time, listen to them, and ask them where they heard that information, who told them that. They might have heard it on social media from a vape company selling their products to your child. So really dig into it and see, where did you hear that? Why do you think that? And again, just try to be patient. I know it's hard. Um, there are resources to help you. This presentation won't be the only chance you have to get more information about this. All right. Now, we've heard what the students are saying. I want you to hear a little bit more about what the experts are saying. And these are experts from Friday Night Live, which is a youth development program that helps to reduce substance abuse and alcohol use among youth. And we found that youth respond best to these strategies, creating a safe space, giving them positive skill development, listening non-judgmentally, which I know is so hard as a parent, but it's really helpful when you're trying to discuss this topic with your teenager. Giving them facts, which everything I've given you today, unless I say it's my opinion, these have been based on scientific facts an open dialogue, so it's not just a lecture. Of course, when you're sitting down with your child, you might feel like lecturing them. And again, there are certain times in your family, based on, again, your family values and expectations, when a lecture might be needed. But if you're trying to get your child to open up about their personal use, you really want it to be open. Learning from their peers is a huge one, and that's where we incorporate peer learning into our diversion classes and family engagement, which again, you're already here. I'm preaching to the choir. You're involved, you're engaged in this content. You're spending time on a Thursday afternoon to learn about a topic you care about. You are engaged. So really be proud of yourself and take that confidence from being here into your conversations with your child. You care about your child. You care about their life. You care about their future and let them feel that heart that love that you're giving to them in these conversations. Now, what's proven not to work with youth are scare tactics, shaming or blaming. So telling a child that they're gonna die if they use this product. <laughs> Although I did start out with talking a lot about death. Um, I don't usually start off my conversations with youth about percentages of death. I give that to adults for the facts, but youth are very, very rarely swayed by death numbers. They, they think, or they've been told by everyone that everything they do is going to lead them to death. And so they've kind of lost interest in that message. And a lot of our youth have friends or have acquaintances that are using these products and seem absolutely fine. They didn't die <laughs> and they don't understand the longevity of this can take a while to kill you. This can take a while to cause lung inflammation. Um, and because they're young and they feel invincible, scare tactics don't work with them. In fact, it turns their ears off. <laughs> so try not to use that. Shaming and blaming are often natural tactics that parents will use. But again, it's one of those that just turns their ears off. So it's really hard, but very important for you to understand that quitting is a personal decision. All right, in our diversion, our youth diversion class, which will be starting next week and going on every month for the rest of the school year, we teach the skills necessary to quit and provide motivation for quitting. Okay, but it is a personal decision. You can't force your child to quit as much as you'd like to. And I understand a lot of you who have children who are using these products, you definitely want to use every tool in your tool belt to get them to quit. All right, now we just have this last section of resources that I just wanted to see if there were any other questions that came in between the last time. Not at this time. I think some uh, questions are being answered right in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much. And. Okay. I will give a shout out to Long Beach Parent University after this, but they're 
they're doing an amazing job. I think you guys are awesome. And thank you for taking care of all those parents. Thank you. So now we're gonna get into some resources. I talked about eVolley and THC containing uh, products. We here in Long Beach have a cannabis and marijuana education program called Drive Safe LB, Green Light LB. And their goal is to prevent distracted and drug impaired driving and provide health and safety information related to cannabis. So the email there is where you can get more information if you wanted more on cannabis or marijuana. Now, if you forget this information and you just reach out to me, I'm happy to connect you. So um, again, I'll have my contact information at the end. Here are some resources to help quit. For youth, they can quit, uh, they can quit or they can help themselves in the quitting process by texting Ditch Jewel. Jewel, again, is one of those products that was very popular a few years ago and is still well known among youth. And I think it makes for a very short <laughs> um, acronym to use in a texting campaign. So that's why they say Ditch Jewel, but it doesn't have to be if your child is using Jewel. It can be any kind of e-vape e-cigarette or vaping device. So they would text Ditch Jewel to the number 88709. For parents, you can text QUIT to that number on the screen. And you can also call 1-800-NO-BUTS. Um, I'll read the number out just in case I have someone who's listening. Um, it's 202-899-7550. You text QUIT to that number. All right, I would not do well on the radio here not a radio personality. Okay, now resources for parents. Um, you cannot click on these as links since they're in the YouTube video. However, there will be links to these um, in the description box uh, of the YouTube video after this presentation. What's on the screen here are the Surgeon General Report um, and it's a parent, uh, parent toolkit on how to talk to your kids. It covers a lot of the same things I've already talked about, but it gives you exactly what to say and how to say it. We have it available in English and Spanish. Some other websites that you might be interested in gathering more information from are the Truth Initiative, the Partnership to End Addiction, and Parents Against Vaping e -Cigs. So these are some of those resources that you can take a look at. Now, I'm going to talk briefly about the local programming, aside from Greenlight Long Beach, which was focused on marijuana and cannabis. Now we're going into specifically the Tobacco Education and Prevention Program, which is the program that I have the pleasure of working for. And this is my favorite slide of the whole presentation. It's the Tobacco Diversion Program. It's what we're doing to help our youth in Long Beach quit tobacco. Now we're not a cessation program. So again, we can't force your child to quit as much as I would love to. Um, but what I can do is educate them, equip them, and empower them to make the healthiest choices for themselves. So if you have a child who's currently using tobacco or e-cigarettes, we can help you. There is a link on the slide. Um, it's called bit.ly slash LB Youth Tobacco Diversion. And that takes you to a registration form where you can fill out some basic information. We'll contact you to let you know when we have availability in our classes. The classes are offered virtually once a month on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday afternoon after school. So we give them a break in between being on school, on the computer all day long. They get a chance to stretch, drink, grab a snack, and then they jump on to a Zoom call with me and other youth who are going through the same thing that they're going through. And I provide that safe, non-judgmental space where we can talk about what they're doing, what they're using, give them the education, give them the skills, and give them that empowerment to make their healthy choices for themselves. All right, they're gonna learn those refusal skills, they're gonna learn about nicotine addiction, and they're gonna learn what the best quitting strategies for youth are. All right, that's available currently for ages 14 through 18. However, we are going to be opening that up in a few months for middle school aged youth. As you saw, there's a huge jump in our middle schoolers using these products. So we really wanna serve that community as well. All right, some other wonderful programs we have and we're wrapping up our presentation here. So get your questions ready for us. 
Uh, we have our Youth Coalition. It's a local um, youth group that meets monthly to raise awareness in Long Beach about health issues around tobacco and vaping. And they learn really great skill building, skill or skill building activities, uh, such as public speaking, group projects, and campaign strategies. So for more information about that, healthy Long Beach youth leaders at gmail.com. And again, these are hosted virtually at the time. We also have a summer youth leadership program, which I had the pleasure of being a part of this last summer. And it's similar concept, local youth are meeting online and they're building their skills. They're learning how to strategize the campaign, present to city commissions, meeting with city council members, conducting a photography or video project. They learn a lot of great leadership skills. It's wonderful for resumes and college applications. And that same email there, healthylbyouthleaders at gmail.com. Now for our adults, youth are allowed to come to this as well, but this is where I mentioned in the previous slides, if you wanted to get more involved in these issues, this is the place for you. The Coalition for Smoke-Free Long Beach, it's where you can meet with other residents to learn more about the vaping epidemic, the flavored tobacco products ban, and more. We have uh, people who are working specifically on smoke-free multi-unit housing. I currently live in a condominium and I understand working from home, I'm being more exposed to the people in my building if they are smoking. Now, my unit does have a smoke-free policy, but people are still using those products. So that smoke-free multi-unit housing task force really helps uh, with residents who want to take more action on that issue. And of course, discussing other tobacco priorities. So we have our uh, Facebook link there as well as our email. And we'd love to have you join us at our next meeting. So if you want more information, feel free to reach out. All right. So this is our last slide, but I'm sticking around for questions. I wanna thank you all for your attention, your questions, and for sharing this information with your children and your community. Again, I work for, with the Tobacco Education and Prevention Program, my phone number, email, and the website where you can get more information about our diversion and our coalitions. That's all there for you. So again, thank you so much. I'm very humbled to be able to present to you all and to work with you and your children in the future. So um, we'll open it up for any questions. Cassie, thank you so much for that informative presentation. I know I learned a lot. Uh, we do have one question. Would you have any tips or strategies for parents to pass on to their students that might be facing any bullying if they are choosing to say no? Great question. Um, first, my heart goes out to those who are feeling that. Um, there's different levels of bullying. So um, talking with your youth first, uh, seeing what is actually being said and what how they feel about that. So oftentimes youth will be What's the word I wanna say? Bullied is the word, but there's another word, kind of just teased. Um, not to say that it's not the same as bullying, but their, their friends will tease them and say, oh, come on, why are you scared? You don't wanna do it. The old, you know, you're a chicken kind of <laughs> um, insult that friends throw around at each other. And I want you to be able to explain to your child the difference between general teasing and how they can just wipe it off and say, you know, whatever, I don't care about your opinion. Um, but then they might be actually getting more bullied. They might be getting called out on social media. And that's more of a where your parenting would want to get involved in that. So kind of distinguishing how severe the bullying is, is first and foremost. And second of all, letting your child know that you're so proud of them for saying no, because well, you're proud of them, one, for coming to you and talking to you about it. That shows you have a great relationship with your child and they trust you. And two, that they are um, that they said no, which is an excellent, wonderful reaction. Um, and let them know there's often times throughout their life that they're going to say no and other people are going to say, well, why not? And it's often about the other person. So. Let's use um, a son as an example. If your son says no, his friends might get upset because they feel judged 
So if you can teach your son how to say no in a non-judgmental way, that might help. So an example could be if um, your son is offered the product and he says, no, I'm good, thanks though. The friend might say, come on, just do it. All of us are doing it, it's fine. And he'd just be like, no, I'm not feeling it right now. You can do what you wanna do, but I'm chilling. You know, <laughs> maybe you use different language. I was born in 89, so you know, my, my language isn't what kids use nowadays. But um, another example could be a more adamant no, because some of the friends might be being really disrespectful and say, look, man, I don't want that. You do what you wanna do, I'm gonna be over here. And it helps if you remind your child to move themselves from the situation, okay? Even if they just move to a different seat, if they're in a car or if they're um, at a, they're not really supposed to be at parties or gatherings right now, but if they are around other people who are using these products, physically moving themselves to another area of the house or the environment allows them to distance themselves and they can always say to that friend, hey, when you're done using it, come over, let's play games, let's do video games, let's do whatever they're planning to hang out and do. Um, but just that component of using the e-cigarette is not what they're participating in. And if it continues, like the friends just completely disrespect them and don't um, stop the bullying or harassment, then call it for what it is. It's, you're kind of harassing me, dude, like leave me alone. And if they continue to push, then they're really not your child's friend and you don't want them hanging out with those people. So kind of explaining to your child what friendship is and what friends are supposed to do. They're supposed to bring value to your life, not degrade you and make you feel bad for choosing a different choice. Um, so I hope that answers your question. I'm happy to elaborate more if you'd like to. And again, I go into way more detail with your children when I work with them in the diversion class and help them um, learn how to say no. Even if they're using, they can learn to cut back. Yes, thank you. I think you did a great job answering that. Um, so if you do have a question that comes to mind, please feel free to email parentuniversity at lbschools.net and we'd be happy to either uh, get the answer from Cassie directly or we may have the answer from the, the presentation. Also, the presentation today will be available to view in Spanish, Kamai, and English within a few days on Parent University's YouTube channel. Before we say goodbye today, I do want to let you know of an opportunity to get involved with a community organization. LBUSD is collaborating with Latinos in Action, and they're having a conference October 24th, which is a Saturday from 10 to 1. It is free to register. It's via Zoom. And the topic is the coronavirus and its impact on children's emotions and learning. If you are interested, and we would encourage you to join, please look at the link that's down below for our Latinos in action. Again, thank you for your time and for tuning in for such an important topic, and we look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Have a safe and um, healthy week.